My hunch is that few of us think about the end of our life and how we want it to be. My other hunch is that many of us have seen examples of how we wouldn't want our last days to be. Our next guest has thought more about the quality of our last days than we have. I first met him as a customer of his wonderful store on the 4th Avenue called The Magic Flute. He has always been committed to high quality music, has even commissioned an important musical piece called Job by Sir Peter Maxwell Davies. He believes passionately in how music can nourish the soul at important moments. And he has created the Health Arts Society to bring quality music to people as they near the end of their days. Please welcome David Lemon and special guests, Mark Takeshi McGraver and Kenneth Broadway. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. This is just great. It's a wonderful thing that you and Lynn do, and I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you so much. Lise Lemieux's painting, Lola's Bed, was inspired by the end-of-life frailty of a dancer friend. But Lise also explained to me that she wants to represent the living humanity of the person. She floats in life still, and it's to this life that Health Arts Society is dedicated. The Society's Concerts in Care program is directed to our understanding that joy and delight are vital for people toward the end of their lives. Concerts in Care is just one intervention among many that we need to improve our quality of life for people in care, especially frail elders, but also people with serious disabilities and with mental illnesses. The program consists of 45-minute concerts presented by between one and four professional musicians in a series of five to ten concerts a year. We started Concerts in Care in 2006, and they're now presented by seven health arts societies, including Quebec's Société pour les Arts au Milieu de Santé across the country, and we shorten that to SAMS. The music's from a wide variety of genres, classical, jazz, and music familiar to our diverse populations. So here are a few numbers. In seven years or so, Concerts in Care performers have given over 7,500 concerts for an audience of over 300,000. In BC alone, we will have paid $2 million to musicians by the end of this year, and across the country, it's about 3 million. Last year, the seven societies presented 1,835 concerts to an audience of 72,000. That's like 110 sold-out performances in this theater, and roll on that day. But of course, our audiences can't get to the theaters. Our halls are not red and gold, but institutional dining rooms. I'm not talking about retirement homes, the luxury hotels for the over 55s. Those are places that you must live, must leave if your symptoms become complex and you will have to move into a, a public institution. It has to be said that the public isn't meeting, the government isn't meeting its own residential care regulations in important ways, nor is it completing on its obligations to provide cultural and social services under the BC Residence Bill of Rights that are pinned up in every care residence in the province. We seem determined that taxes must not rise. But a government that does, not have, that does not have the revenues to pay for services can't at the same time claim to, pay, to provide, them, provide them. That's why some frail elders spend their last years on a bed separated by a curtain from three other people in the room, even though the regulations call for one to a room. We hear from politicians and people in health care services that residential care is going to be replaced by home care. It's just not going to happen, even if more practices of this kind are being implemented. People with dementia usually can't be looked after at home until right to the end of their lives, and as we make our bodies last longer, cases of dementia will increase. But music pierces dementia. We've seen it over and over again. Music's fundamentally enriching for people who aren't in care, how much more for people who will never leave it and have so little to occupy them. And quality does make a difference, it really does, whatever a person's state of mind. 
There's lots of subsidy, public and private, for music, for people from the early stage to late maturity. But at the moment, it doesn't extend significantly to people in care. This is an arbitrary distinction. If the claim to subsidy is that music is important to our fundamental humanity and enriches our communities, it's unconscionable that the audience doesn't include our friends and families in care. These are the people who established our place and our families. For all the discussion about inclusivity around diverse audiences, we don't hear about the hundreds of thousands of people in Canada who are in an audience, who are an audience for high quality music, well performed, and are as yet little served. How often, too, do we find a new way of providing opportunities for musicians without generating substantial operating costs? Concerts in Care provides work for professional performers on a scale that even now rivals that of much larger organizations. And if we are to close on our goal of 2,800 concerts a year in BC, we'd need less than 1.4 million a year to do it. 75% of that, at least, would go to musicians. We've already mapped every elder care residence in the province and costed providing concerts everywhere. $1.4 million is a fraction of what we spend on our public performing institutions. Surely we can do that. Our program is driven by reactions like this from a resident. I was just entranced by a display of musicality, the performer's obvious love of music, and their pleasure in sharing their joy in ensemble playing. I've spent many hours reliving this experience and will never forget it. A carer said, one of our residents with Parkinson's disease, disease told us that for the entire performance, he did not shake or experience any tremors, which for him is a huge comfort. From another carer, it's as if I've been drinking Kool-Aid my whole life and someone just gave me a nice glass of wine. <laughs> I have to have a light finger on this. Another carer said a seriously depressed client who after refusing to leave her room for days heard that Robert Silverman was coming to play and asked to be dressed, have her hair fixed and lipstick put on and be taken to the concert. She then talked about it for days after. The benefits to performers of Concerts in Care, this is new work for a reasonable stipend and an opportunity to establish a warm and close relationship with the audience. Here is what two of them have to say about performing Concerts in Care. Tara Semple said, the seniors we have met have touched our hearts and they are a great joy to play for. It's also a great joy for families who come out to be with their loved ones and are not able to communicate very well anymore. It gives them something to talk about and enjoy together. Janelle Nadeau said, I have truly enjoyed every moment of this. I realize that this is my favorite form of work, and I'm even more thrilled to be a part of this concert series than before. The change and effect that the performances have on the residents and even the workers is palpable. We are on the side of history on this one. We'll only have to realign our priorities slightly in care and arts funding and philanthropy to make this program work. It must be a matter of ordinary expectation that our families in care should have the same comfort and pleasure from music that all human beings enjoy. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce two superb musicians who regularly play for concerts in care, Kenneth Broadway, piano, and Mark McGregor, flute. They will play their own arrangement of the Richard Strauss song, Secret Invitation, which they've played at several of our concerts. Thank you very much.
Thank you, David Lemon, and thank you, incredible music. Thank you for making uh, people's lives at the end of their journey a much more meaningful and beautiful one.